Okay, ready to start the next stage now. Anybody there? I'm here. Okay. I love the okay. bowl. The bowl came up, it's great. Yeah, uh, it still needs quite a lot of work, but uh, yeah, it's basically the, it, it's basically yeah. the, yeah. Um, so, um, obviously, um, I haven't got as far as uh, I would have hoped, but uh, so I'm going to try and tackle, uh, maybe I'll tackle this uh, rose up here first to see if I can get that to a better level of finish. Uh, and then we'll see where we are time wise. I don't know if you've got to go, that's fine. Um, but uh, you're welcome to stay. Uh, I expect it'll probably go over quite a bit from two and a half hours, but. Uh, Yeah, we'll see how we do. I think at this stage, one thing I could do is uh, just adjust some of these edges. So um, using my, um, my dry brush, it's a soft, very soft brush. I can go in, because uh, the paint's still wet, obviously, I can go in and soften some of these edges. So I'll use a brush that doesn't have any paint on it. Uh, is that the, Alex, is that the coma you're using? Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay. So um, uh, when when I do this, I'm not I'm not doing it just arbitrarily. Uh, I'm looking at the subject, squinting, and deciding, uh, checking out where the hardest edges are. So you see, I, I didn't touch these edges here because they're some of the hardest edges on this front edge of that rose there. And then when I compare it, say, to that back edge of the bowl in there, that's relatively much softer. So that, I can soften that edge up a bit. I want to be careful not to over lend because uh, the colour will become muddy. But it's going to be easier to soften them at this stage because I'll be putting paint shapes on top of that rather than waiting until later to do this. So this back edge of the leaf is when I compare it to the front edge here it's softer. So I'm just going to soften that up. Uh, probably on my last painting that I did, I uh, had some comments that the, the background was too busy, um, which was probably is a fair comment. So um, maybe maybe I'll calm some of these strokes down in the background. I don't want them to maybe overpower uh, the sh some of the paint marks that I'm going to put maybe in the rows. That's entirely up to you, of course. You might decide that you want the background to be busy. Mm -hmm. I'm, going to, I'm going to soften all this because this is on the periphery of the painting. I don't really want the eye traveling out of the painting that way. I want to keep it sort of in this area. So I'm going to soften some of those strokes. Excuse me, Alex. Yeah. Um, I, I, from this angle, I couldn't tell if mm. you went over the rose also. 
uh, this one or this one? Uh, this the bottom one. Yeah. The bottom one. No. Uh, yeah, I was just I was just softening some of those edges. Just um, so. Yeah, I was just softening some of these edges uh, in the shadow area down here. Okay. Uh, because uh, really, when I when I look at it, this this front area here is that's where really the hardest edges are uh, along here. So they really these need to be relatively softer because that's what I see in my subject over here. Um, sorry, that's what I, that's what I'm seeing in my subject here. So the shadows down here compared to this front edge are softer. Okay, so Thanks. it's all about relationships, really. Um, there's value relationships, color relationships, edge relationships. Sorry, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you yeah. so much. Good, good. So uh, I'm just softening some of these shapes inside the rows. I mean, I haven't really indicated the shapes really that well yet. I'm just going to soften some of those strokes. It will just make it easier to apply the strokes I need to on top. And uh, when, I, when I'm doing this, I'm squinting at my subjects again, just to make sure. When I do this as well, I try to keep my uh, the, the touch very light, so that uh, I'm not tr I'm not trying to lift any paint off the canvas. I'm just sort of moving it around a little bit. Excuse me, Alex. Yeah. At, at what point would you use the medium? Oh, so I've been using it the whole time. Oh, you have? Yeah, yeah. Um, Set really in the very early stages. I'm just using a bit of solvent and paint. Um, but I've been using it uh, the whole time. I sometimes use a bit of medium, a bit of solvent. Um, if I want slightly thinner paint to mirror. Like I tend to use more solvent when I'm doing the the background, uh, but uh, now I'll be using more thicker consistency paint. Uh, so probably not using so much medium in the next stage. Okay. Yeah.
Okay. I'm fairly happy with that, I think. Um, if I wanted to, I could actually leave this now until tomorrow, um, you know, and, and carry on working on it then because I've set up the edges. Um, so the paint will be fairly, mostly dry tomorrow, probably except for the white areas. Um, so I, um, the trouble is if I if I'd left it before manipulating the edges and I ended up with hard edges everywhere I'd have to overpaint everything to readjust those edges which would be a lot of work but at this stage I, I don't necessarily have to do that now because I've set up my edges how I want them so I could quite happily wait until tomorrow but obviously I'm going to carry on now so I think be a good time to clean my palette. show you the effect that uh, softening those edges has had of you so you see that okay yeah cool okay Um, yeah, of course, Sheila. That's that's great. Thanks for joining us. Um, unfortunately, the first half of the recording hasn't worked, but um, so uh, but that you're welcome to. Uh, hopefully, the rest of it will work. Uh, so you're welcome to use that. And of course, you can use the photographs as well if you want to use that. But I'd recommend uh, painting from life, really, rather than painting from a photograph. Okay, it's, it's really beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, you're welcome. Is that Sheila? Sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah, all right. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, sorry you had to go. Hopefully, um, it's given you enough information uh, from the, the first sort of stage, the lock in. But uh, yeah, so um, I, I think it was user error. I forgot to press record. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Um, but I'm recording now, so uh, hopefully this second stage, I'll, you can have that um, as part of the, uh, you know, and then uh, use that as reference. That would uh, yeah. be wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> you. Bye. Bye bye. So, um, oh, hello. It's Marilyn. Um, oh, hi, Marilyn. At, at the end. Uh, I mean, when you're totally finished, because if you, you probably will work on it tomorrow. Yeah. So usually. Well, you... I might, I'll probably try to finish it today if I can. Okay. But, uh, yeah. But it'll probably be quite late. <laughs> oh, okay. But usually yeah. you, you put it on Facebook, correct? The That's finished. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The finished okay. painting. Yeah. But I'll, I'll, send, I'll send you the painting by messenger, the finished one anyway. So, yeah. Okay. And I, I've taken a couple of photos at different stages. So, um yeah. Oh, great. Thank you so yeah. much. No, yeah. You're welcome. Okay. Are you, are you going now or are you staying for the next? No, I, I can stay for a little while longer, but okay. then I'm going to have to go to also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, I'm going to, uh, I'm not sure which, I think I'm going to tackle this rose up here. So I can get that to a high level of finish. Uh,
I'm going to have to also mix up some of this background colour because that defines the edge. Still squinting at my subject. Trying to notice the subtleties I can see. See, there's a really nice sharp edge between the back of this rose 
on the edge of that bowl. I'm sure I can get that. Um, I like to say that all the, the action happens where the edges are rather than inside the shapes. So if you can give a lot of attention to the edges, especially in the light, well, you, you need to give attention to all the edges, but the, the light reveals detail and shadows tend to make more, well, things that are not in light in shadow tend to be more mysterious and ambiguous. I'm trying to tackle the shadow areas first and then I can put the highlights on top. Um, also paying attention to how the saturation varies across the different planes of the flower. I'm going to swap to a slightly smaller brush. Uh, this one's good for doing these, the very edges. It's very thin. It's one of these, uh, it's an eclipse coma, but it's a small one, a short hair one. Uh, it's just very good for doing these thinner edges. I'm going to have to resort to pure cadmium red to get this saturation on this petal edge here.
shape slightly wrong here.
Now what I could do at this point um, is just go in and soften some of these edges inside this flower now. Um, let's notice a little mist. How's that looking? Beautiful. Love it. It's beautiful. I'm just going to refine some of these edges again. Funny how the tiniest little marks can make such a difference. Careful not to overwork it. I think that's done really. I don't, probably don't want to do too much on that. I could probably, I can go back later if I feel it needs it. Oh, beautiful. Looks great. Beautiful. So, um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, probably the good idea at this point to tackle the rest of this structure here with the leaves. Then I, if, I, if I finish that off, I don't have to worry about finishing these. I could finish those another time. Um, but if it would be a good idea, seeing as these areas are kind of all connected to finish that rather than moving on to somewhere else. Because once the paint's dry there, I'll have trouble. I'll have to repaint it if I want to adjust the edges, which would be more work than I'd want to do, really. Um, um, Alex? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be leaving now because um, I have an appointment also. Yeah, well, sure. Thank you so much, and I look forward to the finished product. Oh, good. Thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you found it useful. Oh, really? Wonderful. Thank good, you so much. Good, good. No, you're welcome. Thank you. Oh, have a nice holiday, everybody. You oh, too. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. So I'll, I'll probably carry on for another half an hour, if you want to stay. I think I can, I think I can stay for a little while longer. Okay. Yes, I can stay for a while longer. So I'm just mixing up the color for in here, which I haven't tackled at all yet. It's actually pretty dark. Well, that's going to be dark enough.
It's too, too cool. It needs to be a warmer green. More like that. This is quite a fun stage because you're refining the shapes that you've already laid down previously um, and you can go in and decide how much you're going to 
reveal or Alex, I'm going to have to leave now. Okay. It's been fabulous. Sorry, thank you. I don't know that oh. one. Oh. Thank you for joining me. I uh, appreciate well, it. I really enjoyed it. I look forward to... Uh... Yes, th thanks very much. Um, so uh, I'll send you the part of the video that I've managed to record uh, and um, anything else I've, I've managed to capture. Thank you. So who's left? I'm not so it's sure. just, I think I'm the only one left, am I? Or I'm not sure. I can't hear anybody. No. I see six participants. You're three. Yeah. Um, so let me have a look. Yeah. Uh, um, oh, so cool. I see Diane, is that you speaking? That's, that's me speaking, yes. Yeah. Uh, Gloria's still here. Okay. I think she she was going, but. Yeah, I'm go I don't know how to leave. Um, oh, do you want me to log you off? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know how to... Oh, okay. You see it in the bottom right-hand corner? It says leave. Oh, I think she's gone. Yeah. You did it? Okay. <laughs> she disappeared. Um, yeah, I was having trouble there myself. So well, when the the video, would you send it in Messenger? Is that with a uh, that, It'll be too big to send by Messenger, I think. It's normally okay. a pretty big file. So, yeah, so I'll send it by, um, if you give me your email address, I'll send it by oh. WeTransfer. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do, you, do you know that service? No. Oh, oh well, don't it, worry. Um, oh, yeah. No, that's Are the one I was. Me? I think I was trying to send you money through that, right? Uh, <laughs> we transfer. That PayPal. That was PayPal. Yeah. Oh, um, I, I it's all right. It just comes too. as an, a link. You just, it's just a download link, basically. Okay. Uh, yeah.
Well, I hope you found it useful. Well, I'm loving it. I, um, I haven't painted for a while now, but when I was painting, um, the, the artist that uh, I seem to be um, drawn to are have loose strokes like you do and yeah. a nice technique. And I, I learned from a man he taught out of his house and he was a very um, like a realist, realistic painter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I kept trying to learn to be more impressionistic and looser. And I, and um, he wasn't that type of teacher. And maybe my personality isn't the type that I can get loose, or I don't, I don't know. But I love. I don't think it comes down to personality, really. I mean, I yeah. used to paint quite t tightly myself um so how did you how did you loosen up did you just yeah, do it so, on your um, own or well yeah pretty much um so what got me started painting sort of in the way i do now was when i saw richard schmidt's work do you know his work no oh right. right okay so um schmidt so oh let me show you this book um uh, then okay. i think you'll find it very useful so can you oh, can you see that? Uh, let, me, yeah. let me zoom out. Yeah, you gotta zoom out a little bit. Yeah. So it's uh, called Alla Prima. Okay. Uh, it's by Richard Schmid. C H M I D. Okay. Yeah. Uh he's, he's a he's an American painter. Uh so uh the book's it's quite an expensive book, but it's very good. It's worth the money, I think. Uh there is that's the second edition. That the first edition is just as good really. And you might be able to pick up a second hand copy. It's about, I think it will work out about, mind well, you in the States, you won't have to pay as much postage as I did. Uh, so um, yeah, I think it's probably about $100, something like that, maybe less, $90. Okay. So it's pretty expensive for an art book, but <laughs> it's- Well, it's, you know. Yeah, but it is very good. So okay. um, that helped me a lot. Uh, but also just studying the, the work of artists that you like. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, you heard of like master, copying the masters, right, as a thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, so I would rec maybe do try doing that. So trying to copy a painting that you like, um, right. you know, so uh, try to do it from a screen rather than printing it off there, because if you print it, you'll lose quite a lot of it. Um, yeah, so that's probably what I'd recommend doing. Uh, but also painting from life as much as possible uh, because yep. really um, so the whole thing with something looking loose is just the way it looks it's not it's not that you you throw your brush marks everywhere and you can do that but generally mm -hmm. that, if your basis isn't good then you don't generally get a good result so you still got to have control so it's right. control over your values, your such all the things that I've been talking about, really. Right. So, and then if you want it to look loose, it's just how refined you take it, and what what areas you do refine, and where the, what kind of brush strokes you want. Um, you know, if you if you like, I like my brush strokes to be quite visible, whereas like a realist painter wouldn't want that, really. Right. Yeah, they yeah. they want to hide the fact that it's been painted. They want it to look not necessarily photographic, but less less obvious that it's been painted it do you see what I mean like, difficult so the brush marks aren't as obvious whereas I like the style of painting where the brush marks are obvious and it's it's part of the painting and you know it's not necessarily really highly finished all over there are areas that are more finished up so right, right. that's the kind of that's the kind of painter that Richard Smith is I think I mean some of his work is very quite tight and then some is is extremely loose you know yeah uh, but I think the, the thing that the key thing is the values the saturation relationships, the edge relationship, they're still all there, even though it's loose. Right. So that, that's why it still works. That's as, why as it as, looks so beautiful to me. Yeah, yeah. And so you've got that abstract quality as well as the, the realistic quality as well. And to me, that's kind of sort of has more, I just find it more appealing. It's more exciting and, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's basically what I did. Um, is studying the work of painters. Another one is uh, Daniel Keyes. Daniel he studied. Keyes. Okay. 
Do you know his work? No, so he I... paints a lot of florals, so he's he'd be he'd be worth looking at. So um, I, s- if... I started buying some books when I was getting a little frustrated with um not frustrated with my teacher he was really good he taught me about how to mix colors and how to look at things and so i did learn a lot from him i didn't mm-hmm. go to art school it was a, a a man who taught out of his home and it was just a bunch of yeah, yeah, yeah. older ladies like me well there's nothing but, wrong with not going to art school i mean yeah I, I mean i didn't learn this what i do now i went to art school and it didn't help me do this at all Oh no. Uh, no. Well, I guess so, you yeah. just keep learning from different people. So yeah, I, I think so. I went into a bookstore and I pulled out a book by someone named Greg Krutz. And I think he's from Philadelphia. And I really liked his work. And then I, I pulled out another book from someone named David LaFell. I know oh, David LaFell. Yeah, I've got one of his books. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, and I, the introduction to his book was written by Greg Krupp, so I said, I guess I like their oh. technique. And I've learned a lot from those books. Yeah, I think it's just studying lots of artists and then I suppose deciding what, because even if you try to copy those artists, if you say, oh, I really want to imitate that look, you end, you, it's very hard thing to do to actually you you end up de- developing your own style anyway you know even right. if you set out to imitate someone unless you you know like really careful uh, and that's you know you want to create something that's like exactly like it you, over time you'll find that you start to develop your own particular way of mark making and you know mm-hmm. um at least that's what, what i found anyway um so even though i admired the work of richard smith i, I wasn't you know, I didn't want to imitate him as such, right. but, but the principles remain, you know, the, the principles are the same. Right. You know, the whole thing about value. So, um, you want to have your own style. Well, yeah, but I don't think you need to necessarily make it a conscious thing to try and set out to do, you know, uh, it'll just happen naturally. I think. Well, I like what you do with the dry brush where, after you've got it blocked in and you go over it with the, the dry brush, that's the, um, when I was looking at your paintings, I was saying, how does he, how does he get that look? And so yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah, alone so was worth the price of admission to me this morning. That was a great technique that I. Yeah. I mean, uh, some painters would say, don't do it that way because they say, um, there's one painter, um, I know he said, Oh, you should paint with paint. So that sort of breaks that you know, rule, if you like, because I'm not painting with paint, I'm painting with a dry brush, I'm just moving the paint around, really. I mean, you could, another way to manipulate your edges would be to paint into your edges, which traditionally is what you're really supposed to do, rather than pushing the, I mean, there's no rules, it's up to you uh, at the end of the day. So one of the dangers is pushing the paint around on the canvas is that you're effectively mixing the paint on the canvas, but there's no problem with that, you know, as long as you you get the result that you want. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to put this stem in. I think now. I've got. I've been putting it off because once I put that stroke in, that's it, really. Which Which stroke are you talking about? This stem here, coming off here, it's quite important. Yeah. So uh, it's it's going to going to be fairly important. So uh, I need to. I've sort of been avoid. I've been avoiding it. (laughs) You can't mess up now. (laughs) Well, exactly. I can. I can always mess up. (laughs) Yeah, there's always. Yeah. Well, it looks great. Good. Always good idea to take a break if you're feeling a bit tired as well, because then you get a bit sloppy, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, you don't have to stay on for me, by the way. Well, am I I the last one? Am I the last one on? Yeah, I'll, I'm, okay. I'm going to stop in about 10 minutes and okay. I'm just going to put this in. I, I'll probably carry on with this this evening. Okay. You know, because uh, it's, it's just easier to work when the paint's wet. Right. Once it's yeah. started to dry, then it, it's much more difficult. So. Um, well, I'm not going to talk to you while you just do this part.
Oops. Okay, that's not too bad. <laughs> not bad at all. Looks really good. Nice. Sorry about the glare. I don't see the glare. Oh, you don't see it. There we go. No. That's really nice. So I think I'm going to stop there then. That's um, so great. I'll, okay. I'll take a photograph and uh, I'll carry on recording. Okay. Um, and then um, you can see how I paint the rest of it. Okay. Uh, and I'll send you that when it's when it's finished. So I've managed right. to record half of it so far. That's um, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right then. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for joining me. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks so so much. Okay. You have have a nice holiday. Oh, you too. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Well, that was awesome.